brother! Okay, Ben, I think we can all agree collectively that the greatest movie Disney has ever produced is The Emperor's New Groove. Oh yeah. And yet, tragically, we, a YouTube channel who just celebrated its eight year anniversary on the website and who makes Disney content, has made but a single Emperor's New Groove video. Embarrassing. I know. It will not do. The problem is that what makes the movie so awesome is how it does not take itself seriously at all. It is constantly breaking the fourth wall and pointing out flaws in its own logic and it is just definitely not afraid to spend extended amounts of time developing a single joke that has absolutely no bearing on the plot. Three workers wearing pants, plate of hot air, basket of grandma's breakfast, and change the bowl to a gill. Got it. Uh, I too would like a plate of the hot air, please? That's the chili cheese sampler. Oh man, is anyone else immediately hungry? The end result of this approach to making the movie is pure comedic gold. But the problem is, it doesn't leave us left with much lore to make theories about. I mean, yeah, there's that one spider that eats the bug that can talk. And you're like, wait a minute, the only animals that can talk in the movie are ones that have been turned into animals by Yzma. So does that mean that the bug that was just eaten by the spider used to be a human that was turned into a bug by Yzma? Yeah, probably. I mean, we know she can turn people into bugs and that you can put those bugs inside of boxes and those boxes inside of other boxes. And if you're willing to pay for postage, mail it to yourself. And when it arrives, smash it with a hammer! It's very dangerous <laughs> down here. <laughs> It occurred to me, guys, if Yzma's out there turning people into bugs and letting them be eaten by spiders or else smashed by hammers, then who else might she have killed? And what happened to Kuzco's parents? Well, today we find out. Pull the lever, Scott! Hey, brother! Okay, so uh, not for nothing, Scott, but that was the old intro. Yep, nope, that's my bad. Uh, in my defense, though, why do we even have that lever? Fair point, but I've never really understood what this line is actually about. Like, isn't this the exact reason why she has that lever? So somebody will pull it and fall into a pit of alligators instead of finding her secret lab? Hey, yeah, okay, that's magical, but uh, can we get back to me? Okay, so not a ton of background is given to really any character in the Emperor's New Groove, but there's not nothing to go on. For one, we know Cusco was made emperor as a baby, and Yzma says after she's fired oh, that- uh, Little to the left. She practically raised him. And since she's the power hungry villain of the movie who tries unsuccessfully to poison Cusco at dinner. The poison, the poison for Cusco, the poison chosen specially to kill Cusco, Cusco's poison. That poison? Yes, that poison. It's not a far off stretch to assume that maybe she killed Cusco's parents so she could take control of the throne. The issue being that if she was willing to go that far, why let baby Cusco live at all? Well, trying to get to the bottom of this, I started reading up on Yzma. I know there's a sequel to The Emperor's New Groove, Kronk's New Groove, and a short-lived TV show on the Disney Channel, The Emperor's New School, and it seemed pretty plausible to me that Yzma had received some additional backstory in either of those. But what I found was even better, a completely recorded but never used song from the original movie. Sort of. Okay, so the song in question is called Snuff Out the Light, and it is actually included on the movie soundtrack. It is performed by Eartha Kitt, who is the voice actor for Yzma, and provides some very interesting backstory and motivation for Yzma. Namely, that she is upset with the sun itself for robbing her of her youthful beauty. Here's just some of the lyrics. When a woman acquires a certain age and the men who adored you no longer swoon, it pays to avoid the sunlit days and live by the light of the kindly moon. I really stopped at nothing, murder, treachery, and lying, whatever it takes to keep my looks. You really can't blame a girl for trying. So yeah, she's basically seeking eternal youth in a very Mother Gothel esque style of motivation. But that is not all we learn from the song. We also find out that her father was the royal mortician and that he is the one who taught her how to do magic or alchemy or chemistry or whatever it is she's doing to make all these crazy animal potions. Hey, I've been turned into a cow. Can I go home? 
You're excused. And and we learn she was working with a deity known as Supe, who is basically the Incan version of the devil. And if you're sitting there thinking, uh, this doesn't really seem to add up or make sense with the rest of the movie, you would be right. The reason I earlier said that the song is only sort of from the original movie is because it is left over from a very early version of The Emperor's New Groove back when it was still called The Kingdom of the Sun. That version of the movie was significantly more serious with Yzma working with Supe to bring about a new age of darkness in exchange for eternal beauty. Also. Cusco was gonna trade places with an identical village doppelganger. Whoa. We're twins. And he was still gonna be turned into a llama, but then the doppelganger was gonna be blackmailed by Yzma and I don't know, I'm really glad they didn't go down this path. The tricky thing about this though is trying to determine whether or not any of the information from the song still counts since it's so clearly associated with a much different version of the movie. And I think the answer is yes to an extent. I mean, obviously Yzma ended up as a much more comical character and she is no longer working with the devil and her main motivation isn't to achieve eternal youth. But I feel like it still makes sense that she grew up around the royal family, especially since we don't get any other background for her and she would have had to have been close to the family somewhat if she was the one who ended up raising Cusco. Right? And while maybe not to such an extreme, I think she is still very proud of and obsessed with her looks. While it's not quite as blunt or in your face as the song was, there are still tons of examples of this trait being moved forward into the final version of the character. For example, Yzma has a lot of outfits, like way more than any other Disney villain ever. From her advisor wear, to cave wear, to lab wear, to dinner wear, to funeral wear, her pink sparkly dress, travel dress, she dresses for the occasion. Totally pulling off that sombrero if you ask me. Happy, happy birthday. Plus, you can see her wearing a face mask at one point, cucumbers and all. And she travels around in a portable backpack thing to avoid being exposed to the sun. Not to mention, just when Cusco is about to fire her, he gets super distracted by all of the wrinkles on her face. And while that may say more about Cusco, don't forget, she practically raised him. I think it would have turned out better. Yeah, go figure. Even Kronk himself is an example of this. We learn from Cusco that Yzma gets a new right-hand man every decade or so. I should tell you right now, I'm kind of hard to fit. Kronk? I wear a 66 long and a 31 waist. Cusco's obsession with looks and appearances is born from Yzma, as is most of his other undesirable traits. Hey, everybody hits their stride. You just hit yours 50 years ago. And it's not just when he's dealing with Yzma that you see these tendencies come out. It's also when he discovers his own appearance as a llama. My face, good. My beautiful, beautiful face. Okay, I'm an okay, okay, okay. Well, llama. Or how about the fact that just lying around are several many busts of his head available for a smashing. And then of course there's when he's choosing, or uh, I guess not, choosing his bride. Hate your hair, not likely. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Point is, vanity is a huge part of both Cusco and Yzma's personality. And if the song is anything to go off of, this is all born from Yzma's inability to accept the effects of time on her body and the tragic loss of her own personal beauty. Now, admittedly, it is hard to put too much stock in the song. However, I know this is digging kind of deep, but we do get to see what a younger version of Yzma looked like in an episode of The Emperor's New School. It happens in season two, episode two, when Kronk randomly discovers a rogue fountain of youth just out in the woods, which he promptly accidentally drains, but not before Yzma gets to drink some. That's all? That should be enough, right? And in case you're wondering, yes, those were the original voice actors, I was as surprised as you are. Everybody's back, said David Spade. Point is, we can confirm that Yzma was indeed beautiful in her youth and fetching enough to get Cusco to immediately ask her out on a date, despite his sky-high standards for beauty. Let me guess, you have a great personality. But 
what does this have to do with Yzma possibly killing Cusco's parents, you might be wondering? Well, all of this matters because it reveals why Yzma feels she deserves to rule at all. Again, if the song is to be believed, her father was under the employ of the royal family, so she would have had a lot of time to spend around the palace as a kid. You know how like you're always at your parents' place of work. Especially true of people who work in morgues. A morgue is a great place for a kid. And apparently, as a young woman, she was basically having to beat away the boys with a stick because of how beautiful she was. But that then raises the question, why doesn't she ever end up with somebody? Well, we know she already has a predisposition for power and great ambition, and she has been told her entire life that being pretty is what makes you valuable. But, so what if the person she had her eye on or fell in love with was, I guess, Kuzco's grandfather, based on her age? I mean, you've been around here a long time, and I really mean a long time. Only he passed on Yzma. I mean, if you believe that beauty is all that makes you valuable and you think you're the prettiest person and that that is also what the prince is supposed to value, then I guess you can see how she might feel entitled to the throne. As if the only way this didn't happen was because the universe made some cosmic mistake. Ah, but then, so how to gain power? Like, kill the person you love? Kill their son? I don't know, neither of those seem like very good options. But guess what? Plot twist, we actually know Yzma did not kill Cusco's father. Again, in the Emperor's New School, it is revealed in a flashback that he died on a boat at sea in very classic Disney parent fashion. But here's where it gets fishy, because that only accounts for Cusco's dad. His mom still should have been in the picture, and yet we know that Yzma's the one who raises Cusco, so I guess his mom died shortly after his dad happened to die at sea? I don't know. Yeah, this is totally where I can see Yzma stepping in and trying to seize power because it would pretty much leave her in control as the empress regent or the like guardian of a young monarch who rules while that monarch comes of age. And if I've learned anything from TV in the past couple of years and Game of Thrones, great role models. How did Sansa not kill Cersei is all I'm saying. Like, ugh, rocks, you gave me rocks? And you're reuniting with Jamie? No, Bran is the king? We don't normally do Game of Thrones and no one cares about it anymore because the ending was so stupid, but I know everyone made a dunk video like the day after it came out. It's been, I don't know, a year. We would like to dunk. Our turn, please. <laughs> anyway, if Yzma killed Cusco's mom, that would leave her basically ruling the kingdom until Cusco grew up, which is pretty much what we see happening at the start of the movie. It is no concern of mine whether your family has, what was it again? Um, food? Ha! You really should have thought of that before you became peasants. But there you go, guys. That is my case against Yzma for removing Cusco's mother from his life. Let me know in the towel section down below. What do you think? Is it plausible? Guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. Please remember to leave a like on it if you haven't already and ding that bell so you don't miss any future Disney action from us. If you want to see the legitimate reason that the Emperor's New Groove is the most underrated Disney movie ever, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, until next time, I will see you in another life, brother.